Hello friends, greetings from Thegama, little town of Thegama in the Basque country of Spain, where we are in a in the second day of a lockdown. We can't leave the, the house for anything except the very most the most urgent needs. And so everything is very, very quiet. And of course there are many opinions on all sides of the wisdom and and the reasons behind the different measures that countries are taking across the world but whatever it is that's what our situation is here and so i wanted to share a thought from scripture because in the book of exodus chapter 12 the israelites found themselves in a lockdown too <laughs> Different circumstances, but there are some links. In chapter 12, we have the Passover instituted, and God told the Israelites to stay in their homes, do not leave, because of what was going to happen as the angel of God was going to come through and kill every single firstborn uh, in the entire country of Egypt if they didn't meet the right conditions. And and then he gives them what they are to do in verse 7. And they shall take of the blood, the blood, and strike it on the two uh, side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses, wherein they shall eat it, referring to the lamb, the Passover lamb. And so this blood, um, so important for them to protect them from what was going on outside. Verse 12 says, For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And I can't help but think of the situation here and the kind of the kind of scenario where we are locked down to try and keep this plague this pestilence this coronavirus from from decimating the population or at least killing many many people the centuries go on from exodus there and you go through the prophets and the prophecies build about the coming lamb of god who is going to shed his blood is going to die and we come to the Gospels, and curiously enough, in the first three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, there is no specific reference to the blood of Jesus in the crucifixion. It's implied, obviously, with a crown of thorns on his head and the lashings and, and then the nails in his hands and in, his, in the Lord's feet. But it isn't until John that we actually see the word blood and the the actual topic brought up in words. And John 19, 34 says, But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. And that's the precious blood that saves us from our sins, that gives us a forgiveness and eternal life. As we go on through the New Testament, there are so many passages about the blood. Some of the, I'll just read a few of the key, key verses that you probably have memorized. In Ephesians 1, 7, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. And then later in 1 Peter, Chapter 1, verse 18, also very well-known verses. For as much as ye know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. And we are surrounded by millions ultimately, but definitely thousands and thousands of people who have no peace, they have no joy, they're scared. They, they're, some of them are in a panic because of the virus going around and, and all, of the, all of the news and the hype and, and the warnings and, and the instructions. And those of us who know the Lord Jesus have peace in our hearts and joy on our faces and 
definitely should not be showing any signs of panic or fear. Um, another verse in Revelation chapter 1, verse 5 says, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. That's our message for our neighbors, for our friends, for those around us who in these historic moments, we will never forget these times because of what they have brought to our daily life and daily patterns. And we should be able to leave behind the testimony of peace and confidence and trust and faith in God because of the blood of Jesus. There is no middle road, or middle of the road, I should say. Either our sins are forgiven through faith in in the blood of Jesus, or they are not. The virus in our, if it comes to our body, the virus in our body is not nearly as serious as the sin in our soul. So much more important that we get this message out. Those of us who are saved need to be the light of the gospel of the blood of Jesus Christ that saves us from the most important danger, very much more important than the virus outside, the one that is eternal death. And so may God give us the grace and the strength to be the witnesses we need to be to make the most of this opportunity when people are listening and they are watching because they should see in our faces, in our demeanor, in our just in our way, in our attitude and the way we, are, we approach life now, they should see a difference. And though we may not be able to talk about it right now because for the most part we can't even, we're not supposed to get within six feet of people. But the opportunity will come, it will, in which we'll be able to talk about the faith that we have in Jesus and what his blood has given us and brought to our lives. I trust that wherever you are, whatever your situation, however this virus issue ends up affecting your life, that the blood that on the day of In Exodus 12, at least, it was symbolic of that blood, the blood that saved uh, them in a prophetic sense, and the blood that has saved our souls will be uh, the message that you can give clearly to, to neighbors and friends and family. Okay, God bless you. Have a great day.